All hockey players like to shoot the puck, but not all know how to become a goal scorer. Scoring goals in hockey requires accuracy, quickness, and power. In this movie, Dr. Yasha Smushkin shows you the road to becoming a hockey sniper. The main idea is to help you understand the science of accuracy. This understanding will transfer your shooting power into scoring techniques. Before you take the puck and attack the net, you must be aware of some important elements of shooting and how they are related. Your body with the skates and the stick represents a mobile on-ice machinery with upper and lower units. The upper stick arms unit works as a mechanical lever, directing the puck to a precise target. The lower skate's legs unit is a base where the contact between the edges of the skates and the ice provides both a stable foundation and a power for the shot. The muscular force moves through the legs up to the trunk and is finally transferred to the arms. There are two basic body positions in shooting. In the first position, the player is sideways to the puck and is facing the net. In the second position, the player is facing the puck and is sideways to the net. Shooting has two major forms of puck manipulation. Throwing the puck, also called a wrist shot, and hitting the puck, also called a slap shot. The throwing motion has two components. An acceleration of the stick with the puck and stopping of the stick with the release of the puck from the stick blade. The hitting motion has four components. A preparatory swing, an acceleration of the stick towards the puck, an impact of the puck when the stick and the puck are moving together, and finally, stopping of the stick with the release of the puck from the stick blade. As the body weight shifts from leg to leg in the full range of the stick motion, the upper and the lower units may either rotate, moving in the same or opposite to each other directions, or move together laterally in the same direction as the puck or in the opposite direction. During the contact phase between the stick and the puck, there are two possible kinds of stick control. The arms and the wrists can act as one unit, moving the stick around the body. Alternatively, the arms and the wrists can act as two separate units, with the arms moving the stick around the body and the wrists turning the stick around its axis. In the game, a super powerful shot is worthless unless the puck reaches the net. Because of this discrepancy, Becoming a goal scorer is like flying to a whole new world. To accomplish this flight, you must learn to shoot the puck accurately before shooting powerfully. Therefore, it is important to know the main laws of accuracy. Law number one. It is the stopping of the stick during the puck release rather than the acceleration or the impact 
that determines accuracy. One of the phases of shooting is the travel interval. This is a segment of time when the stick blade and the puck travel together. At the end of the travel interval, there is a dead point, a moment when the stick blade separates from the puck and the puck alone travels towards the target. The length of the travel interval may vary. In wrist shot, for instance, the travel interval is three times longer than in the slap shot. The travel interval and the dead point are crucial to accuracy. For the puck to reach the target, you must stop the stick in a way that the puck continues traveling in a designated rather than in an arbitrary direction. To achieve this, the stick blade must stop at the dead point of the travel interval, avoiding any fluctuations. Law number two. The accuracy in shooting depends on the precision of the player's puck release skills. Even minor deviations in the puck release lead to an unsuccessful outcome of the shot. Thus, the puck will miss an empty net even when shot from just six meters away if the angle of the stick blade deviates horizontally or vertically from the center of the net by more than four degrees. Achieving precision in the puck release is considerably complicated by the fact that the final direction of the puck during the release does not coincide with its initial direction during the travel interval. As a result, precise puck release requires an intricate control of the stick-puck contact and a super feeling of the puck. Law number three. The puck release along the vertical line of the net is produced by turning the stick blade around its horizontal axis. All vertical deviations of the puck from the net result from mistakes in the wrist control. Law number four. The puck release along the horizontal line of the net is produced by turning the stick blade around its vertical axis. All horizontal deviations of the puck from the net result from mistakes in the location of the stick and the body relative to the net. Accuracy is the foundation of a hockey sniper. Therefore, you must learn to apply the laws of accuracy. Rule number one. You have to maintain a very tight grip on your stick. A weak grip makes it difficult to stop the stick at the dead point of the travel interval. Rule number two. You have to perfect your puck release skills. For this, you must master several different ways of stick puck contact. Contacting the side of the puck with the stick blade. This flat contact will send the puck gliding down the ice. Contacting the top rim of the puck with the stick blade. This too will send the puck gliding down the ice. Contacting the bottom of the puck with the stick blade. This will send the puck flying. Contacting the puck without simultaneous rotation. This will send the puck moving in a straight line with no spin. Contacting the puck with simultaneous rotation. 
This will send the puck spinning and its trajectory will deviate from a straight line. As a result of practicing these skills, you will gradually develop the required intricate feeling of the puck. Rule number three. You must first master muscular control of the puck release before establishing visual control. For that, you should practice shooting the puck with slow, soft, and smooth stick swing using the variety of release skills that were shown. Rule number four. To establish visual control of the puck release, you must have a visible target. Without a target, you will never become an accurate shooter. Rule number five. Accurate muscular and visual control of the puck release have to be established first in the throwing skills or the wrist shot before you start practicing the hitting skills or the slap shot. Remember, it is not your strength or your power, but your ability to focus on the task that is the key to accuracy.